Yeah, good morning. Let us resume our discussion. So, what were we discussing in the last class? Can any of you brief uh, quickly? We were discussing about filtering and the design of filters, uh, filters related to constant regions, edges, corner points. Okay, we were discussing about filtering. Uh, how uh, filters uh, help us extract features, uh, how they help uh, to enhance the constant or uniform regions, uh, or to uh, extract some features like edges, uh, or um, corner points, and so on. Correct? So, we have yes. uh, really discussed about feature extraction through filtering, okay, or convolution operation, or correlation operation. That's what we have discussed in the previous classes. Okay, so now let's resume our discussion or uh, let's continue our discussion uh, further on the feature extraction. So, uh, just to have a, uh, a clear idea and to reinforce the importance of feature extraction, why do we need the feature extraction? Can one of you tell? Any quick inputs on why do we need feature extraction? so that we get efficient features uh, for uh, ML classification task. Okay, for any classification task. Okay, what else? Any other, uh, or any other uh, task that where we need the feature extraction? Identification, recognition. Okay, identification and recognition. Of what? Uh, of any object face and so on. Okay, well, where else? What are the other computer vision tasks? Can you name some of the computer vision tasks? Other than what we have written here. Image detection. Object detection. Object detection. Hmm? So object detection means what? What do we do? So in a given image, Okay, we want to identify a particular object. So, let it be car or whatever. We want to identify a particular object. Okay, so this is object detection. So, we put a bonding box around the object. That is referred to as object detection. Or localizing the object. Okay. Okay. What are the other computer vision tasks? Other than object detection. Okay. Object. Tracking, visual tracking. They call visual tracking because uh, they are tracking based on images or the sequence of images. Okay, so you have actually a image here. You have an next image here. Okay, and then you want to track, uh, say if there is a car here. Okay, where is it? In the next frame. Okay, if there is a uh, person here. Okay, if where is the person? In the next frame. Okay, we want to track it. Uh, so from here, to here, what's the uh, like the motion? So from here to here. Previously, center was here. Okay, from here to here. Okay. What is the other coming? Segmentation. Okay, segmentation. Here we want to identify segment a particular object. So exactly we want to give a boundary for the object okay say for example if there is a uh, red blood cell like this or white blood cell like this okay and then we exactly want to say that this is the white blood cell okay and then a red blood cell is like this okay we want to say exactly this is the red blood cell okay and so on so if there is a uh, some other any no uh, Aspects we would like to segment. Okay, it's in uh, microscopic images, platelets, for example. Okay, we just want to say that there is a platelet here. 
Okay. So in uh, um, street videos, for example, where cityscape videos, where you have actually uh, person like road, okay, and then trees, okay, and so on. You want to exactly segment where it is, and then green trees again here, vegetation, okay, or whatever. We want to exactly uh, separate. Oh, this is a road. We want to. This is segmentation, okay. And then what is the other task? Any other task? Depth estimation. So what do we want to do in depth estimation? There also you have actually two images. Okay, you have two images. And then uh, this is the left image and this is the right image, stereo images. Uh, and then what we want to do, we want to see a scene point, for example, or whatever, there is some tower here. From left to right image, there is a shift for this. Okay, so what we want to do is exactly where is this point and this point? What is the relative shift? Okay, this is the relative shift is called disparity, we call it. Okay, small d. And then depth is equal to inversely proportional to disparity. Some uh, say if there are two cameras are separated by baseline b, Okay, and then their focal length is F, then BF by D. This uh, in essence, actually, depth is inversely proportional to shift, relative shift or disparity. Okay, we will see that uh, little more uh, elegantly or mathematically later, but these are the uh, mm, uh, different computer vision tasks. So, uh, roughly, these are the computer vision tasks. So any other computer vision task you want to name? Okay. So given that these are the computer vision tasks, in all of these things, what is common? What is important? Can you name some of the common aspects in all these computer vision tasks? Require what? All of these require what? See, for example, if you want to localize an object, I need to first identify some features of the object, right? If I want to track an object, don't I need to have the features of the object? If I want to segment a particular uh, region with respect to the other region, don't we need to identify the features and based on features we need to separate? And similarly, if I want to identify a corresponding point, okay, that means for this, where is the matching point here, okay? So should I don't need the features around that point? Yes or no? So all these tasks require what? All the tasks require? Feature extraction. Is it clear or not? So this requires feature extraction. Other than feature extraction, what are the other things that these tasks require? Can, uh, can you figure out any other things that all these commonly required, all these computer vision tasks. Hmm? Any other very important aspect that, and it is common to all of them. Say if I have a template of car, okay, if I want to identify where it is, do I need to do matching or not template matching? Or should I not need to do correspondence between different points of score in the template and different points of score in the image or not? Similarly, if I wish to do tracking, even here, if I have actually some key points of the car, okay, should I not need to identify where those key points are in this both images? In this image, I have identified somehow car here, okay, in frame one, and this is frame two. Frame one to frame two, I need to identify where that point is. Similarly, where the second point is from frame one to frame two. So I need to have the same template, the whole template identifying from frame one to frame two, or I need to identify some corresponding points, establishing correspondence between different pixels of an object in one image to other image is important in both detection and as well as in tracking. Is it not important in stereo based depth estimation? So I'm try say if I want to find out for each point, which is a corresponding point, should I not need find need to find 
which is the corresponding point or which is the template of this object, where is it in the next image? So that each point, I know how much disparity or the shift, relative shift does, does it has? Yes or no? Yes, yes. So we need to identify in each of these things, even if I want to segment, if I know the objects of interest, say if I know this is the, uh, say this is how the white blood cells look like, or if I know this is how the red blood cells look like, Okay, so I try to find out similar similar characteristics in that in this image. So this matching happens here, not at the uh, mm, a particular uh, template level, but at the feature level. Okay, in in terms of segmentation, also we are finding the correspondence between the features of the uh, class samples of the that class versus where these these kind of features are there in that image. So what is the other important task that is common for all these computer vision tasks or other important uh, subtask that is required for all these computer vision tasks. Hmm, what is the other thing that is important for all these tasks to accomplish? Template matching. What's that? Template matching. Template matching. Some cases what we do is template matching as it is, is not easy. The reason being See, this may be of uh, different scale and this may be of different scale. This car may be of different scale. This car may be of different scale altogether. See, this may be of different view, a person itself, when we want to match a person's face, for example, he may be of completely different view in other images. So the 3D objects may be of different views, different scales, different appearances, geometrically and photometrically. The imaging also may be different from uh, Imaging conditions may be different and the uh, background and the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the background aspects also will be different. So photometrically, there may be variations on the images from one uh, image or one scenario to other scenario. Similarly, from uh, view point and from scale point, geometrically also there can be variations. So now given these variations, what is the other way of doing template matching? So assume that we don't want to completely match the template, but still we would like to make the correspondence happen. Okay, then in such case, how do we make this correspondence happen? Any idea on that? Other than the template matching. Okay, what is if you would like to write this as a common, uh, common important task, subtask that is required in all this, we can write that as establishing correspondence, finding corresponding points. I hope you understand what is meant by corresponding points. Yes or no? So what is the difference between template matching and then finding corresponding points? Can one of you tell just for the confirmation? What is the difference between template matching and finding corresponding points? Yeah, what do you think is the difference between them? In, in template matching, we, we uh, match each and every point, but in finding corresponding points, we just have to focus on some particular points. Very good. Like region of interest. Correct. Very good. So the whole computer vision uh, methods have evolved in these two different directions. The methods where we perform whole template matching is referred to as dense approaches. In some sense, what we do is there we I try to find in some sense either template matching or for every point, we want to find out the corresponding point. Okay, for every point, we want to establish correspondence. Okay, correspondence is established for every point here. Okay, whereas in this kind of methods, which is referred to as feature-based methods, dense approaches we mentioned, right? So it, these are referred to as sparse approaches. 
sparse methods or feature based methods in this what we do is we identify initially itself some of the very key points so this will have two sub tasks one is identifying key points okay and then only establishing correspondence or whatever at the key points so feature matching at key points okay and hence we have also the results for results only at key points in some cases in some other cases we use these key feature or the results at key points and establish the results for the whole uh, whole uh, image okay or the whole region of the image region of interest that we take the initially sparse results and go to the dense results okay so now uh, if you would like to identify some of the key points or the feature points where we in regions of interest points where we essentially want to focus or initially start with which are the points do you suggest so assume that in these different scenarios i have mentioned i would like to take up this approach assume that i first want to find out key points where i should look the information for okay so then what are the points do you suggest the question is where to look are which are key points good key points okay if you would like to approach this anyway for this we know how to make perform template matching extracting features and performing template matching here the first task as we said is which are the key points okay the it's the same question is posed differently as where to look for information okay and there what information to look is again extracting features feature extraction only so that we are anyway discussing and we will discuss further as well okay so now the this class discussion is mainly concentrated on where to look for information or how to find the key points good key points yeah any answer for this or any thought for this so in a given image say i have shown a car here a person here okay and then a pyramidal structure here okay in these different scenarios where should i look which are the points which will help me to identify the information better some answer is expected yeah where should i look say in, for example if i have a uh, say i want to detect a car which are the regions i should initially look for information hmm no idea on that say to make it, yeah uh, the two uh, ends of the cars you can use yeah, two ends of the cars so we can easily say that actually they so these are the two regions probably we can initially focus okay fine so if i give you pyramid uh, shape like this and again here also i want to look for some regions where i initially wish to focus are the interest points i would like to locate in this image which are the interest points in this image now which are the interest points in this image the tip of the pyramid yeah okay where else this one region where else corners 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 very good so now if we see all these aspects which are very potential points okay are the key points to look at for information easily distinguishable or high information are the corner points now what is speciality about this corner points the question is why corner points its intensity will be higher than its 
enabling yeah can no can you repeat the intensity will be more than its enabling pixel we can uh, see more the intensity will be more uh, okay. of the corner point than its enabling points okay fine so the scenarios may be different see for example in this uh, example assume that inside all is uh, say black and outside is white. So corner point may have a lesser intensity than the uh, surrounding regions. Is it not? The gradient of intensity. Okay, very good. Gradient of intensity is high. Good. So the gradient of intensity is high, uh, not only at corner points, but also at edge points. Is it not? Yeah, along the whole edge, I will have a better uh, intent like gradient. Is it not? Then why corner points? Assume that I have any maze. Just simply I have some uh, something like this. Okay, and then probably, okay. So, and then like this. Oh, now, if you see along the edge also, I have actually good gradient. Why are we looking for a corner points? Why not this point versus this point? So, point one and point two, which is more informative or which is easy to catch. Okay, for my matching or for my, okay, for matching, let it be at the point level. Okay, rather than at the template level. Matching, feature extraction, also uniquely matching. Okay? Uh, correspondence, all those things. Which point should I consider? P1 or P2? Both has high gradients. Uniform regions, of course, it may be dark and this region, this region. Okay? That we ruled out just now. Okay? Yeah. So, which point? P1 or P2? P1. P1, very good. So, why P1 is the question now? Because uh, along P2, along the edge, there will be zero intensity change, whereas corner gives high intensity change in all directions. Okay, very good. So, if you see in, if I want to match this point P2, P2 can be matched, uh, like, it cannot be matched uniquely. It can be matched with any of these other points as well. Is it not? If you see actually between two templates, so uh, this edge point, if I see, for example, let us bring this itself, here itself. Okay, so this edge point, if I see, this edge point can be matched with respect to this point, okay, or this point, and so on. So if this is P3 uh, or P0, okay, P0 can be easily matched with P2, P, so P4, P5, and so on, P6. So all the uh, points along the edge point match to another edge point. Is it not? So I can't make unique match. P0 is a match. Okay, uh, for P5, P6, and I can make many more combinations. Okay, the, uh, so the reason is, corner point Y is because it can be uniquely matched. Okay, this is one important property. The other very important property that uh, just now uh, Abhimanyu has pointed out is what? The variance Okay, the variation in all directions with respect to the corner point is high. Variation of intensities anyway are features. Is high. Okay, that qualifies a corner point and that is a very good feature for establishing a match. Why is it a good feature? Because that will help me to uniquely match between across images or within the image to the template and so on in all these computer vision tasks. So assume that now what we have seen is uh, the points where you have actually variation of intensity in all directions are uh, important points or interest points. They can be uniquely matched across different images or they can be uniquely matched with respect to the template. So now the question is, how do we mathematically identify them? The reason being, see, image is a, say, one. sometimes it's a very big, okay, 1024 cross 1024 or 256 cross 256. And number of images are also very vast. See, if we take a video, 30 frames per second we are getting. And then uh, we have actually, uh, each, we, each image is 256 plus 256. 
if i want to identify a person where is it in the whole video i just want to identify a particular person where he is in the whole video it's not an easy job and on the top of it what we want to do we want to see interaction between the persons and objects persons and persons and we want to know where two persons are together where a particular person is doing what okay action recognition for example uh, and we also identify want to identify a particular uh, object and its path okay or its uh, track over the video so these are all the different different challenges that computer vision faces so given all these challenges it's not very easy to uh, mm, it's not very easy to uh, to identify or perform these tasks on a large scale unless we have a simpler method or a mathematically tractable method for identifying the points of interest or the regions of interest in any maze okay so now the question is say assume that there may be several uh, objects okay there can be some car okay as we are thinking and there can be some person okay and there can be some you know, some other uh, uh, building okay and uh, many other things so now the question is in the whole image i want to know where objects are okay uh, where there is an important information to look for okay so how do i do that i need a mathematically a uh, viable method to capture the corner points assume that since we discussed so far and boil down that the interest points are nothing but the corner points are the points where they have high variance in intensity in all directions okay so now i need to have a mathematical approach to figure out such corner points how do we do that what should be the mathematical approach for that any uh, any suggestion on this what's a good way to identify corner points so change of slope change of slope fine so i can find out first of all one suggestion is i if this is i of x comma y assume that i have found i x where i x is defined as do by do i of x comma y by do x okay so gradient in x direction okay and also i have found i y do by do x i of x comma y in y direction okay fine good then then what is the next step i have found gradients in x and y directions of course i can also find if we write uh, so gradient g okay root of i x square plus i y square here okay fine then what is the next step then any other suggestion see not necessarily you need to follow this okay you can come up with your own method that's how the field has been evolving any other thought say assume that i have a i want to identify this as a corner point okay this is very clear corner point right so i want to identify this as a corner point what is the suggestion you have we can uh, find the difference in intensities in all the four directions like we did earlier like x plus 1 comma y x minus 1 y like very that. good and if it's greater than some threshold we can identify the pattern very good so the suggestion here is i calculate i x comma y minus i of x plus u comma y plus v okay this difference for all u comma v for all u comma v means u u comma v belongs to minus 1 comma 1 that means minus 1 0 1 okay so if we uh, it belongs to minus 1 comma 1 and you can also compute in the say what uh, the suggestion is you take a template here 
okay you see how much the difference is with respect to to this shift okay this shift okay this shift okay and then this shift okay and then this shift all these shifts okay so each shift you take and with each shift how much is the variation we want to see that difference is now u comma v okay i'm just writing difference in terms of d u comma v i will see in all directions okay and then i will see actually whichever uh, shift has the, then i will see that what is the next step you said do i have to take the difference and then then we have to like if the difference is greater than some threshold okay quantify the threshold in any u comma v or for all u comma v it has to be greater than threshold for all u comma okay then only we say that in all directions uh in all directions the gradient is high or the variation of intensity is high okay so somebody is conveying that you can take the uh gaussian distribution based rudy filter matrix find you better to convey in the class rather than messaging unless there is a problem for the uh, mm, internet see you can take a gaussian and so on fine but you should have a clear idea on how exactly we go okay so uh, just uh, the uh, for you it looks like the intensity at the middle is a peak okay but not necessarily it uh, it's always a peak it need to be distinguishable from the neighborhood so it means that so it is actually it can be a peak in positive direction or in negative direction further it is also say as we have discussed in the previous classes so the variation in all directions will be better captured not by gaussian but by laplace of gaussian okay that means in the middle if there is a peak and then it is the other sides it is less okay that shows a very clear idea okay in 2d also it is 2d laplace of gaussian this is second derivative of do square by do uh, x square of g of x okay in drawn in with respect to x okay this is laplace of x okay so uh, this this is this is also helpful however actually you have to uh, um, use this appropriately at all directions and then convolve with this and find in case in fact there is a very good uh, method which provides the feature points or interest points based on this that we will discuss subsequently good this is also a good uh, method of doing for easy to understand and initially to start with this is a basic approach that we can easily understand and follow so what we do is we see the difference in all directions and then the, the difference of intensity in all directions is high we can assume that it is a interest point or a key point now the next question comes see this operation i have to do at all points and do we see the difference only with respect to the pixel or with a patch the question is see if i want to take a patch around this point and find the difference or i just take i of x comma y or the question is instead of taking i of x comma y should i take summation over neighborhood of x comma y x comma y now belongs to neighborhood of x comma y neighborhood of x comma y means what it's a patch okay for all this i want to take is i of x comma y minus i of x plus u comma y plus u you understand the difference between this and that so i am just putting actually square here because the difference which are positive to negative negative to positive both are important for me okay so the question is should i take this or should i take this here i am taking a patch patch difference around x comma y and here pixel difference at x, x comma y which is better patch difference is better patch difference gives broader perspective yeah it gives the the whole information okay information is there in a patch rather than a pixel pixel can also be noisy pixel sometimes so patch usually avoids such difficulties so this is what we do and this has to be greater than a threshold okay for all x u comma v okay the here important aspect is 
if say for example at the edge what may happen the difference will be very high in one direction okay and the difference will be zero in other direction so in that case what happens it's not a corner point it's not a very interest point okay if we want to mark it as interest point it needs that the variation in all directions is high intensity variation in all directions is high okay now the question is how do we do this the initial method that has found out interest points has come with this explicitly with this computation compute it at each pixel okay and see if this is greater than threshold at a given pixel and if it is greater than threshold you say that in all directions you have to count out do it for nine times okay even if you consider a uh, small neighborhood right even if you consider a small neighborhood of 3 uh, cross 3 okay you need to do for eight times to compare okay and then identify which is an interest point and you have to do on 102 cross 1024 means how much how many times you have to do 1024 whole square into 9 okay these many times you have to find for finding interest points okay is it not so these many computations is it viable huh it's not so this is the method initially which does this or which suggested or proposed this is given by moravec and hence this operator which finds out this so this difference at each u comma v and then compares with the threshold okay to say an interest point is referred to as moravec operator okay the later method which is much more elegant and has been uh, very widely used and overcomes many of the limitations of this is being proposed by harris what the suggestion here is can we simplify this we don't want to compromise anything okay so i want to find out the same objects wherever they are okay and then the corners and so on okay i want to find them but however can i simplify this be able like can i identify them better okay now the question is how do we simplify this process of finding any idea on that so the final expression we want to get is i of x comma y minus i of x plus hope what i am writing you are able to understand x plus u comma y plus u for a square x comma y belongs to what x comma y belongs to neighborhood of x comma y okay neighborhood of x comma y means it can be 3 cross 3 5 cross 5 and so on so this summation will ensure that we are take, taking a patch this essentially is for okay a patch difference okay this is just doing patch difference and where we are doing this this operator now if i write e of u comma v it's finding at each u comma v but see u comma v is also for all u comma v i will find this this is a function of u comma v find but at each x comma y also i am doing this please note that at each x comma y i am doing but it is a function of u comma v okay so for all u comma v i am doing right for all u comma v belongs to minus 1 0 1 okay and then x comma y belongs to what huh neighborhood of x comma yeah all image pixels image grid okay for all pixels fine so now the question is can we make this better through some of the mathematics or the uh, concepts in mathematics okay. can we simplify this can we pose it as an optimization problem or can we pose it as a much more elegant uh, way of simplification rather than excessively looking for all u comma v 
the main question has uh, um, arised. See, if we are looking for uh, u comma v, different u comma v, what we are doing is we are checking here, we are checking here, we are checking here, and so on. So we can even in a discrete grid, you can check only for eight combinations. But there can be other directions, okay, wherein u comma the variance uh, with respect to, to that object is variation is less. Okay, so I would like to capture all continuum of u comma v without discretizing. U comma v, can we solve this? Have mm, solution for this. If you would like to solve for all u comma v, this measure e has to be what? So, okay, how should I pose the optimization problem as? That's the next question. What is the optimization I would like to achieve? Any solution on that? This u, u comma v only I'm writing because anyway we need to do it all x comma y. Okay, and hence u comma v is only the function I would like to highlight because with respect to the u comma all u comma v we would like to consider okay some optimization. What should I do with respect to all u comma? V? Any session on this? If I define this as e of u comma v, okay, what is that? I would like to uh, identify when which x comma y is a corner point or interest point if if what yeah if what is the condition now any solution on this e u comma v right has to be what so as we discussed before what is the condition on this has to be greater than or equal to threshold or it has to be less than or equal to threshold is it for all u comma v or for any u comma v so how do i formulate the condition that's the question here what is the answer Huh? E of u comma v has to be less than or equal to threshold or greater than or equal to threshold. What among these two, if you would like to pick, which one will you pick? Greater than threshold. Okay, greater than threshold. Okay, but for which u comma v? For which u comma v? That means for which shift do you want the threshold to be greater? You will be to minus one comma one. Okay, see minus one comma one is a fine, but I am asking is it for particular u comma v? Say if it is say what I would say is should I pose this optimization as say e of u comma v summation over u comma v has to be maximum. Is this required? Is this the better optimization or e of u comma v? Okay, maximum of u of u comma v. Okay, has to be greater than threshold. Is this uh, an optimization problem we would like to pose, or should we would like to pose? Okay, minimum of u comma v, e of u comma v. Okay, greater than threshold. Or should I like to pose all u comma v greater than or equal to threshold for all u comma v? Well, how should I pose the optimization problem? See, optimization problem doesn't mean that you just give this, okay, and uh, you should have a single expression. You can't write for all u comma v, uh, and then you differentiate with each u equal to zero. That's not the way, okay, in which we do. So we should have a better uh, formulation here. So among, say, these four options, which one do you suggest? First one. First one, okay, very good. For all u comma v, it has to be greater than threshold. Now, first one is equivalent to what among two, three, and four? First one is obviously true because we have been discussing on that. Okay, so first one is equal to what? Which okay. among two, three, and four? Four. Huh? Only four. Okay, why four? Because if minimum is greater than every part is greater than. Three. 
Yeah, very good. So in case if minimum itself is greater, okay. So it means that it's anyway, minimum itself is zero. If it is greater than a threshold, if it happens, then it is anyway a corner point. If minimum is not greater than threshold, it's not a corner point. So all, if you would like to capture, what is the operation that captures all is minimum, okay? So what we want to do now, if you would like to pose an optimization problem is minimize, what? Minimize E of U comma V with respect to all U comma V, okay? And that will give you a solution, okay? For whatever. So that solution that gives you the minimum value of that U, E of U comma V you see, okay? And so it first this gives you direction in which E of U comma V is minimum in all U comma V. So this gives U star comma V star. From this, you can compute actually E of U comma U star comma V star. And that has to be greater than a threshold for corner point. Okay, is this clear? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So now, how do we perform the minimization operation? E of U comma V I write here. And that is double summation over XY belongs to neighborhood of XY. Okay, XY can take all the values in the neighborhood of XY. Further, what can happen is, see, as somebody has mentioned before or whatever, so we can give more importance to the central pixel than the other pixels in terms of its information. So we can also multiply this with respect to, to a wave function, wx comma y, such that wx comma y will have maximum value at the center, okay, and then the minimum value at the like it can go down in the surroundings. <coughs> so this way it can be like a Gaussian. Okay. So if I considering neighborhood is phi cross phi neighborhood, then this W of X comma Y will be phi cross phi Gaussian. What it gives is it just gives different weight for different pixels in the neighborhood while computing this difference. So this whole together is what the patch computation, okay, summation with the uh, um, summation and multiplication with the W. W is two dimension. Okay, so please note that in one dimension, W is like this. W of X, if we see, is like this. Okay, so it's a Gaussian in X, but W of X comma Y, you can consider it as W in X. Okay, transpose of W in Y, if I write it as a vector. Okay, W in X transpose of W Y will give me matrix. Okay, 2D matrix. And it's a 2D Gaussian. Okay, so 2D Gaussian, I can't sketch better. Okay, so I assume that you can understand here. Okay, it's like this. The contours of equal values will be like this. And peak at the middle. Okay, that's 2D Gaussian. Okay, so that's can also be added in the optimization procedure to make a, uh, like give more importance to the central pixel and the optimization also better. So now the whole overall optimization function is W of X comma Y and I of X comma Y minus, of course you can interchange, okay, I X plus U comma Y plus V you can write first or whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. Go to square. Now the question is how do I minimize? So my optimization function is minimize it for all u comma v. Okay, minimize for all u comma v. And find out first u star comma v star. Okay, or directly you can find out a minimum a, like e of u star comma u star comma v star is like this. Okay, and you can directly you can also find out e of u star comma v star. Okay, that's what is the optimization. Now, any suggestions on how do we solve it? Let's give the idea and then let's move on. How do I proceed? One very good idea is required. See, one way is differentiate and then equate to zero and so on. Okay, but they don't want to do that. The reason being, they want to see, uh, He Harris, in fact, wanted to see, can we write this in some sense? Okay. Uh, in a uh, um, compact form, okay, without explicitly differentiating, 
can i find out e star e of u star comma v star directly okay i want to find the minimum value and i want to find the minimum u v implicitly and want to use it to find e of u star comma v star explicitly okay can i do that so what he has done is he wanted to first simplify this and see okay if i want to simplify this cos function itself one more step any suggestion how do i do that one way of solving this kind of cos functions is see this can be first we want to simplify this in this part okay which is key part so i of x say up to uh, you can simplify to some extent by using some tyler series expansions okay so because what usually is important it is it is not very important to have the very accurate solution but it is important to have a simplified and reasonably close solution so if i expand this by tyler series how does it will be how how can any of you help me in expanding this entire series around x comma y i want to expand i of x plus u comma iv y plus v around x comma y in tyler series expansion so just like you have actually i so how in one dimension what do you write i of x comma y i of x what do you write in one dimension like if you have a uh, i of x plus u and if you would like to expand in tyler series how do you write i of x not that is x here plus what what is the tyler series expansion for i of x plus u where u you can consider it as delta x okay you know that x not plus delta x and so on right so how do you expand i of x plus u into do i by do x okay right and so on plus what oh u square, u square into do square by do x square into y x of course there will be some uh, here what two factorial what huh? what is the constant term and so on I, this you can check is it two factorial divided by two factorial two what is that uh, divide by 2 factorial right divide by 2 factorial correct okay and then here divide 1 by 3 factorial into and so on you can write these are all referred to as higher order terms okay and this is the first order term this is referred to as first order term where the derivative is of first order as you can see so usually when we expand entire series is good enough to write up to first order term which is which captures a lot of information reasonably good information in many cases especially if we assume that the things are smooth okay it captures good information and u is small okay so now if i want to write in two dimensions how do i write u into do i do x plus v into do i what should i write here do do y plus higher order terms okay so now you can see that whatever we have here is essentially the main tyler series expansion this i can write okay so now if we bring this in this expression how does it simplify can one of you quickly tell so i of x comma y and i of x comma y get cancelled and what else is remaining now u into i x i write this as i x because do i by do x is i x plus v into i y all is good okay you see a nice or simplified expression for e of u comma v this i want to minimize for all u comma v is this clear yes sir yeah oh you can uh, those who wish to uh, pursue a little bit you can pursue to see if we can write this in a simplified manner okay in terms of a matrix m and then in terms of u v is like this okay and that matrix m 
we can see the properties of matrix m to identify u or uh, e of u, u star gamma v star data okay so now what we uh, have seen is we have seen that through taylor series expansion and taking the first order terms we can simplify this e of u comma v in this way right so now the next what is the uh, important aspect that uh, harris has pursued is rather than explicitly finding derivative of course you can find the derivative equal to zero and so on and do but without explicitly finding if we write somehow in this way and then use the properties of matrix okay to identify the region where the variance or the variation of this u comma v is minimum among all possible values of u comma v then that itself is greater than threshold then we are done the idea is like this so as i mentioned so e of u comma v so we have simplified before as double summation xy wxy into u ix ix is do i by do x okay do where i x is actually i is with two variables okay x comma y v into i y okay derivative in x direction derivative in y direction whole square now the thought or the idea from him is that see i need to anyway for all u comma v i have to differentiate equal to zero find u star v comma v star and substitute here that's one procedure without even doing whole uh, without explicitly doing all that can we do a better way the answer by him is yes what the idea is can i write this whole thing in some sense that see u comma v i would like to take out and i would like to write a matrix here okay this let this be two cross two matrix with m as being the matrix and this is u comma v then how does it look like it looks like as if okay if there is a uh, u comma v is spreading over all directions if i see in u comma v so in all directions if we see u comma v is taking then among all the possibilities of u comma v this matrix m in some sense captures an error okay or the variance okay of this uh, intensity profiles from i of x comma y to i of x plus u comma i of x uh, u comma i x plus u comma y plus v so m captures variation of intensity from i of x comma y to i of x plus u comma y plus v okay considering all of them so this is in sense way it can, can captures the variation means that it is similar to quite similar to a covariance matrix in u comma v okay a covariance matrix in u comma v that means if we have data distribution like this that means if i have just a set of samples like this okay see so if i see the samples are distributed like this in some uh, two dimension okay each sample is having these say i have taken 100 samples and they are distributed like this then what i say is if i see the spread of the samples that is what is captured by covariance matrix okay so the spread of the samples is high in one of their direction spread of the samples is low in other direction here if you see okay so spread of the samples is maximum in which direction in this 45 degrees versus in this say assume that this is uh, uh 225 degrees okay so among these two directions are here let's put uh, 135 degrees this 45 degrees versus 135 degrees in which direction the spread is maximum of the samples here and in which direction the spread is minimum spread is maximum in and minimum in in what in 45 degrees and minimum in 135 degrees so if i capture the minimum and maximum directions of the spread okay or if i capture the minimum direction of spread i am done right so i know the lowest variance in which direction the variance is minimum correct so the idea is that so if we consider it is similar to covariance matrix if i identify the lowest variance direction 
directly identify from from m lowest variance direction that is what essentially u star comma v star okay and that e gives as directly e of u star comma v star is this clear now the question is how do i identify the lowest variance if i give you some data like this it is similar to having variation in different directions of u and v for different shifts of u and v if i give you some direction like this data like this how do i identify the data in which the spread is minimum or maximum any answer to this anybody knows how to identify this if i give you a matrix m which is covariance matrix in two dimensions a sample are in two dimensions i want to identify the spread where the maximum spread is there minimum spread is there any idea on how do we do this we can do this by eigen decomposition okay if we write this in terms of eigen values and eigen vectors assume that e1 e2 are the eigen vector matrix okay and this is a phi lambda phi transpose this is how the eigen decomposition for m happens and then this lambda 1 lambda 2 okay essentially provides the directions of the spread minimum and maximum directions of the spread in fact it's essentially provides the lambda whichever lambda i corresponding to the the uh, highest lambda i will indicate the maximum direction of spread if i decompose like this maximum lambda i corresponds to highest direction of spread variance and hence what lambda other lambda okay if lambda 1 corresponds to highest maximum direction lambda 2 other lambda uh, other than lambda i where corresponds to minimum direction okay lambda i here are the minimum lambda i otherwise we can directly take minimum lambda i gives minimum direction minimum variance direction okay so simply you just see the eigen values and then you will be able to find out for which u comma v direction the spread is minimum is this idea clear e of u comma v if you are writing i want to separate e of u comma v now how do i separate is a question so i will take the this again this one so how can i write this better how can i write i anyway want to separate u of u comma v can i write like this or not yes now how do i write how do i write this this if i consider somehow as some uh, value in including vectors how i can i write is into this transpose can i write like this or not same thing yes sir transpose. now if i bring this thing here how do i write this is just a mathematical simplification you see how elegant he has come up with this so once we discuss the like the whole method you will see that this avoids many many things and it is the fastest method for almost one of the best method and fastest method for color detection okay so u comma v here and this gives me ix square is this clear just a simplification now i will bring in whole thing and put it here 
and what i do is this yukamami since it's ir like it is uh, mm, doesn't depend upon x comma y i will bring this out okay and whichever depends upon x comma y i will write at one place hope you people are understanding okay if you are not able to understand this is a good time to ask okay so i have just rewritten now whole thing whatever is the equation one i have rewritten using okay with the simplification in two you can see this this whole thing they refer to as matrix here okay and what is this nothing but this is a gradient matrix okay with gradients i have formulated this matrix m except that this multiplying with a gaussian at each x comma y indicates that i am performing convolution okay so now in a sense matrix m is nothing but w x comma y or a w filter okay convolution with okay i x square i will write explicitly here i x square i x i y I Y X R I X I Y doesn't matter. I Y square. Okay, so this is what is here. Hope this is clear. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we will conclude the the uh, discussion now with a small uh, concluding remarks in terms of how they find out the minimum values. So of U star comma V star. as we mentioned the eigen decomposition will help us in that so where we have seen that in the previous discussion so even dropping this w convolution with this uh, ix uh, you can also drop convolution with uh, w you can directly take the gradient matrix also this is ix into iy please note that gradient in x gradient in y okay this is the matrix so this we can write as m11 M one two, okay. M two one, or M one two itself, okay. Both are same. M two two at each pixel x comma y. Okay, so now I can perform again decomposition here. M can equivalently be written as phi some matrix into lambda one lamb zero zero lambda two. Since this is a two dimensional matrix, finding lambda one lambda two is not difficult. Okay. And once I find lambda one, lambda two, I can easily write like this. And this lambda one, okay, the whichever lambda is smaller, that will give me the direction of small variance. But if I would like to take in general rule, I want to formulate now a rule based on lambda one and lambda two. Tell me how should I formulate the rule to have actually e of u comma v. Minimum for all u comma v. The same problem now. I want like to translate to in terms of lambda one and lambda two. How should I translate? Huh? Both lambda one lambda two has to be less than threshold. Or lambda one okay. Ah, uh, or lambda two is less than threshold. Or lambda one plus lambda two is less than threshold. Or how do how should I formulate the uh how should i calculate the same thing okay based on lambda 1 and lambda 2 the optimization problem from e of u comma v now need to be translated to lambda 1 lambda 2 that's what is the idea so how do we do that minimum of lambda 1 and lambda yeah, very good minimum of lambda 1 comma lambda 2 has to be less than threshold okay for interest point Or for minimizing u comma v for all u comma v, minimizing e of u comma v for all u comma v. Now the question is, this is how actually some of the operators work. Just pick out the lambda one, lambda two for this matrix and see whichever if it is the minimum of this if itself it less than threshold you consider it as a corner point. 
but Harris has gone one step ahead and he formulated a cost measure such that you no need even to compute lambda one and lambda two also. So I would like to have something which without computing lambda one, lambda two, but the minimum lambda one and lambda two has to be greater than a threshold. Has to be greater than a threshold. Okay. So how he has made is say lambda one, lambda two. See if I would like to consider product or addition, which is better when both minimum has to be greater. Product is greater or summation is greater? No? If minimum has to be greater, will the product gives more information on that or summation gives more information on that? Product. Say product gives. Because if you consider this as 0.1 and this as 100. Okay, 100 into 0.1 is 10 only. But whereas add if you do 1 or 1, okay, 100.1. Okay, so the addition doesn't really capture the minimum importance of the minimum value, whereas the product captures. So what has measure the, his measure is? Okay, so he has formulated based on the product of eigenvalues and the sum of eigenvalues, a measure. The advantage of formulating this is no need to find eigenvalues now. The reason being, I know the matrix M anyway with me. I can find the determinant of matrix M minus k times trace of matrix M and use that simply to find out the measure R. And if R is greater than threshold, it's a corner point. Okay, this is how the Harris has proposed an elegant approach. Okay, if I are finding corner points, avoiding all the operations of finding uh, the eigenvalues here and capturing for all u comma v irrespective of the discrete dimensions. Okay, like Moravec has done for explicitly calculating. So at each pixel, what we need to do is simply formulate a matrix with say at each pixel. Now you simply formulate a matrix with ix, find out ix, iy. Okay, simply find matrix m with ix square, iy square, or ix, iy. Okay, iy, ix. Uh, both are same, i y square, formulate a matrix M, and then use this decomposition in terms of, no need to decompose, just find determinant, and then trace, and find out R, and based on that, if it is greater than threshold, declare, declare it as a corner point. So this is one of the best and fastest methods for finding corner points, or interest points. Thank you then.